All right, look, it's no secret that residency is insanely challenging, but some people, especially those who are not in medicine, they don't realize quite how challenging it really is. Now residents, they're facing the low pay, the overwork, the burnout, the depression, a lot of issues, and they're coming together, they're trying to unionize to change things for the better. But these attempts to unionize are often met by resistance by the hospitals that employ them for obvious reasons. But there's one instance in particular with Loma Linda in early 2023 that bears mentioning, and we're gonna dive into what it means for residents and for medicine as a whole. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery at Loma Linda. And in case you're wondering, this is Royal Alishan Oolong from Tea and Whisk, my favorite tea shop. Visit teaandwhisk.com forward slash Kevin Jubal or use the coupon code Kevin Jubal for 15% off your purchase. Link in the description. Mm, that's some good ass tea. All right, so let's start with why do residents unionize in the first place? So imagine this, you're a resident, you're tired, you're overworked, you're burned out, you're raising these concerns to the administration. They hear your concerns and they say, thanks, but I don't really care. They just brush your concerns aside normally what happens. So the residents, by coming together, by unionizing, they can now tap into collective bargaining. And essentially that gives them more bargaining power. So now when the union as a collective, as a single entity goes to bargain with the administration, they hold much more weight, much more sway, and they can put additional pressure on the administration to make the changes that they need. So on the other hand, why do hospitals not want residents to unionize? The first reason is mostly just paying lip service. They're saying that, hey, residents don't need to unionize because these residency programs, they already have their own committees in place to respond to resident concerns. The second and real reason is because most successful union efforts usually result in better compensation for the residents, possibly fewer working hours, and that cuts into the hospital's profits. However, let's take a look at the finances of resident funding. Now, resident salaries are funded by GME, Graduate Medical Education, which receives most of its money from Medicare and Medicaid. And the funding for each resident program is gonna vary based on a lot of factors, things like class size, location, cost of living, and more. But in 2015, the average GME payment per resident was approximately $140,000. For context, most resident salaries range between 50 to 70K per year. Now, of course, there are direct and indirect costs, things like insurance and benefits and educational and food stipends, et cetera. We could still very easily argue that there are, there's definitely room for improved salaries, right? But that doesn't take into account the value that residents provide. So sure, residents are not as valuable as an attending physician in the sense that they are still in training, right? But they're still definitely adding value. And one study showed that anesthesiology residents were profitable for the hospital, resulting in $200,000 per resident in direct revenue. Now, while unionizing isn't this magic bullet that's gonna solve all the issues with residency training, it's at least a step in the right direction. And in recent years, we have seen many residents at various programs starting to unionize. And we have some notable additions like MassGen and Brigham and Women's Hospital, which are of course affiliated with Harvard. If you wanna learn more about why and how residents are unionizing, then check out the video we made over on the Med School Insiders channel. Also, my friend Kevin Foe, yes, the Kevin from Kevin MD, has this awesome podcast. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google, you know, all the good stuff, including on YouTube. And he covers a lot of these really pressing issues among residents, things like burnout, diversity, mental health, and other hot topics in healthcare. And I'm glad we have this resource because physicians are notoriously bad at advocating for themselves. And having a podcast like this, having these discussions, I think is a huge step in the right direction. It's a great podcast created by a doctor for doctors, and it covers a lot of really important topics, things like advocacy among physicians and physicians in training. I think you guys are gonna really like it. Check out the link in the description. All right, now let's talk about Loma Linda specifically and how they were thwarting residents from unionizing at their program. Now on February 11th of 2023, Loma Linda residents and fellows announced their intent to unionize with the help of the Union of American Physicians and Dentists or UAPD to quote, formally organize their house staff for greater collective bargaining to improve salaries and working conditions. The effort to unionize came after residents and fellows had been continuously asking for better working conditions, things like improved wages, better call rooms, meal stipends. However, Loma Linda denied these requests due to lack of funds. And of course the residents had to make do with some conditions that could be improved. And here's a photo showing a supposed call room. Bruh. As of February 13th, they announced that they received enough votes to file with the National Labor Relations Board or NLRB to initiate the official union voting process. At that time, Loma Linda responded, saying that they respect their team's rights and opinions and will act according to the National Labor Relations Act. 
However, one month later, Loma Linda switched their stance and requested to stop the election hearing, quoting that the government can't interfere because of Loma Linda's religious affiliation. One day later, they filed a suit against the NLRB, focusing on two major points. So the first is that due to their religious background, stating that, quote, the church has a long-standing and well-established teaching against joining, recognizing, or bargaining with labor organizations, and arguing that unionizing would burden their exercise of religion. The second point they tried to argue is that residents are students and not actual employees, and therefore don't have the right to unionize. Now, this part of their argument has been used previously in other cases, notably Mayo Foundation versus United States back in 2011, whereby they found that residents should be classified as employees. This was with relations to employment taxes. Now, my understanding is that Loma Linda, the medical school does have a focus on religion. They have some restrictions for their students, et cetera. But the residency programs, you know, I was part of the plastics program. It's, it's not an influence at all. They treat patients following the Seventh-day Adventist church beliefs, but they accept residents from all backgrounds and they don't force anything on anyone. So it seems like a strange argument to now be using. Fortunately, as of April 11th, 2023, the case has officially been dismissed and Loma Linda's civil suit has been denied. This is a big win for residents, not just at Loma Linda, but on a national level as well, because it's setting precedents that an institution cannot use religious affiliation to deny unionization. All right, so why was the situation problematic? Now, their efforts to stop the unionization was obviously problematic to the residents at LLU for obvious reasons, but it would have also posed a threat to residents across the nation. Because if Loma Linda was successful, then it would have encouraged other hospitals to also seek loopholes to block unionization from occurring. As we've already discussed, hospitals are incentivized to stop the unions from forming, and if one program is successful, then others are likely gonna follow suit. Now, along the same line, this would have been particularly problematic and applicable to other residency programs that have religious affiliation. So, LLU, obviously not the only one. There are other Catholic and Jesuit hospitals that have residency programs, and if LLU was successful in using religion to thwart that, then you can bet that they would likely have done the same. And the issue there is that it affects both parties, not just the residents, because now graduating med students are gonna be less inclined to apply there based on the anti-unionization, the anti-resident behavior that they're seeing. Now, this case is obviously a huge win for residents and is setting a precedent regarding religion and unionization, but it still places a massive level of stress on the relationship between residents and programs. Because if the programs are going to go to these lengths to try to block residents from just unionizing and just asking for, hey, better working conditions, nothing too extreme, then what does that say about the program's priorities, how they treat their residents, their team, and how does it make graduating medical students feel about applying to that program? We're seeing a new wave of medical graduates who are not afraid to fight for their rights. And if you're a medical graduate, incoming resident, what you can do is continue down that path and continue to advocate for yourselves and your fellow colleagues. And if this stuff interests you, and if you are a future physician, it definitely should, right? Then check out, again, Kevin MD's podcast because he's touching on these issues, these things that, because historically physicians have been not so good at advocating for themselves. And I think it's great. It's, it's things like this podcast and other uh, discussions that we're having out there to say, hey, we need to actually stand up for ourselves and not be treated like crap. For too long, residents have been hazed and overworked and mistreated. And as a consequence of this, we have concerning levels of burnout, depression, and suicide amongst residents, something that I deeply care about. And while unionizing is not gonna solve all these issues, it's definitely a big step in the right direction. That being said, even as resident unions fight to improve working conditions, work-life balance, pay, all that stuff that we definitely need, we need to take a step back and also look at the system as a whole to see how can we actually address these deeply rooted issues. Only then can we create a future generation of happier, healthier, and more effective doctors. Thank you all so much for watching. Go check out Unionization of Doctors in Residency on the Medical Insiders channel or this other video. Much love, and I'll see you guys there.